So the gardens of Lakar showed me how much God, who is father, son, spirit, slash mother, loved me and desired deeper relationship with me, restoring me to be part of a family. And I didn't really get family because my history with family didn't give me a full understanding about what family and relationship really was in my childhood. Now, as an adult with a family, I looked to at work what I then discovered within that relationship, but I wasn't always successful. But the father desired to reveal to me my sonship identity within family, not independently, not just with me and God, but within the family of God. But there was only so much I could handle at that stage. So God metered out the revelation that I could handle alongside the mysteries that I couldn't handle then, but in the future would be unveiled to me. And that's what happened within that dance floor experience. Jesus said the same sort of thing to his disciples, John 16, 12. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at the present. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Now, all of us have the spirit of truth within us to guide us into all truth. But we may not be able to handle the truth. It's the famous quote from the film. You can't handle the truth. I couldn't handle all of the truth at that moment. Some truth unveiled led me to be able to handle more truth and more truth and more truth until the truth deconstructed me from those things which weren't true that I was believing. So my experiences were progressive and they were often mysteries to me, but that's okay. We don't have to understand everything and figure everything out. Even though I wanted to, I had to come to that conclusion that there were some things which were beyond my comprehension. So the Segula, the stage of relationship where God actually declares, you are my treasured possession, you are the apple of my eye. You are the most important person in the world to me. And of course, he says that to all of us. This is what I received as I experienced the dance floor. So these were dance floor encounters that revealed who God is to me at a deeper level, often by cardiognosis and infusion rather than cognitive understanding, and who I am, my identity and my destiny as a son. Because I had really didn't understand sonship and what it truly meant, both from the relational and the governmental perspective, when I first started to dance with God on the dance floor. And as I danced with him on that dance floor, in my heart, which is a secret place of intimacy and revelation, as I danced with him, at a deeper, deeper level, I became entwined I became entwined with those in that dance floor encounters. And I danced into a series of experiences in the light and in dark zones. So it was like we danced and it was wonderful light and I was had revelation. And then we'd go into a darkness and I didn't know, understand, well, why? What was going on? You know, what was happening? But as I danced with the lover of my soul, I wasn't fearful. I just didn't understand. He entwined with me. He united with me. He brought me into a deeper union with him that unveiled who I really was. And this song um, that I quoted before was a song that actually we used to sing a lot in church. And I would sing it and think about it when I was engaging God myself. Behold, you have come over the hills upon the mountains. To me, you will run my beloved, you've captured my heart. That's what God did in the garden. He captured my heart. He became my beloved and I was his beloved in this relationship where he shared that he wanted this deeper intimacy with me. And he captured my heart. My heart was truly captured. I pursued and desired more and more and more. <clears throat> Won't you dance with me, O lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Romance me 
O lover of my soul, to the song of all songs. Now that song was the song of him singing over me in my creation, in my establishing, in eternity, that revealed my true identity and destiny. So it felt like the music that I was dancing to, and it was a very slow dance. Now, I'm not a dancer, um, but there was a very slow, intimate entwining as we moved around from the dark into the light and the light into the dark that was a romance, the lover of my soul. And I felt, it's not that I heard a song or the words of a song, but I felt the frequency of the words that were true, my true origin in him. So the Sagula, you are my treasured possession, is the revelation of who I am in the light that revealed my identity and the DNA of my being as a son of God, the very essence and glory of who I am. And this is where I first started to go beyond and beyond and beyond into the mystery of sonship. This was way beyond what I could imagine or think at that point. But God still danced me into it. So later I would resonate with what I'd experienced there. This is an excerpt from Mike's current teaching series, Restoring First Love. Get the full length videos every month only at eg.freedomark.org slash first dash love. Psalm 139, 10 says this, and I, I was sort of finding it difficult to begin with about, well, why is there darkness? And then I came across this Bible verse. Even there, your right hand will lead me and your right hand will take hold of me. Now, of course, Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. So this is, again, a symbol of where we sit in a position of authority next to the Father, that he holds our left hand with his right hand giving us authority in that sense and leading us and he led me in the dance i wasn't leading the dance i was following him if i say surely the darkness will overwhelm me and the light around me will be night and that's what i was feeling it's just like i'm overwhelmed what's going on here even darkness is not dark to you because we're not talking about physical darkness. We're talking about revelation or illumination to the truth. And there were things that were not illuminated. That's what it meant. There were mysteries to me. So even the darkness is not dark to you and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you because God has all truth and all knowledge and all revelation. Nothing is unknown to him. But to me, it was unknown. And therefore, there were many, many mysteries that I now have revelation of and experience and testimony of that right then would have been too much for me to be able to bear. But God knew that and God prepared me by depositing the frequency of my experiences in the mystery within me so that those mysteries would draw me into the light and illumination of revelation. Psalm 139, 13. And these, this is a, a sort of chapter which I've, I've read a lot and I meditate in and I feel, you know, God has a special place for me in it. And, you know, I have enjoyed engaging God in that place of revelation. Um, Psalm 139, 13. For you created my innermost parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you because I'm awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. Now, that is wonderful. And the psalmist could declare that. I couldn't declare that. Because actually, I didn't think I was awesomely and wonderfully made because I was looking at myself from the perspective of my humanity and the failures in my life and the things I got wrong and the things that weren't aligned to sonship. So I couldn't say this in truth, but this was what God wanted to engage me in so that I could say this. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my formless substance and in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was not one of them. Now, this doesn't mean that you have a limited number of days. It just means that all the days of your life and all the days ordained for you as a son of God were written. And they were 
written from a perspective that they belong to you in your sonship. It doesn't say that it's going to come to an end. And there's nothing there that says, oh, and one day you're going to die. How precious are your thoughts to me? God, how vast the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the sand. And this is what I began to discover. God had such amazing thoughts about me, which were beyond my ability to think them for myself at that time. But he progressively unveiled them, revealed them and showed me who I am. So I can humble myself under God's mighty hand and accept who God says I am rather than trying to validate myself by my works and validate myself by outworking who I am myself and getting weary and burdened by it all. So I was danced into the light of revelation and I was danced into the darkness of mystery, the mystery of those things that I was unable to comprehend by cognitive knowledge, but my spirit did resonate with them. And later on, it drew me towards them so they could be unveiled. So get relaxed, begin to focus on your breathing, breathe in very, very slowly, hold that breath and then begin to let that breath out. And as you're breathing in, you're breathing in the unconditional love of the Father. That unconditional love is filling you touching every fiber of your being. It's flowing through you. Picture that door in your spirit and choose to open the door. And your choice is an invitation to the Father to come, to hug you, Hear his words, I love you, I love you, my son, my daughter. I love you. Hear some of the vast sum of his thoughts. Let them restore you to his original desire for you. Maybe you'll resonate with them in your spirit. Be open for an infusion of his thoughts about you, of who you really are. Now let the Father take you by the hand and lead you. Maybe he'll lead you to the dance floor, entwine with you heart to heart, and dance with you into the light and into the mysteries. And as he dances with you, allow your spirit to draw from him Let your spirit resonate with that truth. Let even the mysteries be deposited within you. The truth of your identity, the mysteries of your destiny, go wherever God takes you. Maybe you can dance with the lover of your soul. Let him romance you. Let him sing the song of your life over you. Feel the rhythm. Feel the frequency. Feel the life as it activates within you 